so I, I think it's interesting, you know, having observed you, you know, in the last few years, I think what's unique is the opportunities that come to you, the people that are attracted to you. So uh -huh. you shared a story with me the other day. I, I really want to hear you tell that story, but it was that interaction you had with the guy from Verizon and you, within the first few seconds, you told him what you, who you didn't necessarily <laughs> work with. Tell me that story. Um, yes. And that actually is a good, that's a really good description of what I do without me being able to say it. So um, I had to get new internet in my house. <laughs> and uh, I do think this is funny. And also because it came on the heels of a conversation you and I had like literally just had. I think I called you right after you left. Um, and this comes in, he's this chatty, like really nice outgoing guy. He's telling me about his life. Like we're talking and, uh, he goes in the basement to rig whatever it was he was doing. And I just kind of followed him down there cause I had laundry to fold and whatever. And, uh, he goes, so what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a life coach. Cause in that moment it was very. Like, again, like, I'm not going to explain to this Verizon guy, like, exactly what I do. In that moment, life coach just worked. And if he had questions, he could ask me. So I was like, I'm a life coach. And he goes, oh, oh, my gosh. He's like, uh, do you work with autistic kids? And I said, I actually don't. If you need that, like, I know people that are in that work specifically, like, with that demographic. And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, my son needs a life coach, which is always that leads me to, like, the part that makes me laugh is that as parents, we're always like, you know, let's fix the kids. <laughs> right. My son needs a life coach. And I'm like, oh, you need the life coach. <laughs> we'll get back to that later when I know you better. <laughs> um, but so I explained that I don't specifically work with you know, autistic kids or even really kids in general. Turns out that his son is a 23 year old young man. Um, and he just starts telling me about uh, that he has high functioning Asperger's and he's uh, he had graduated school and he has a part time job, but he doesn't really know like what he wants to do in the world. And he just told me this story about his son <laughs> and um, I guess this is a very good question because this helps me tie it back. What I do is I actually tie it back to the parent because it's 90% of the time your child is not the problem, if you want to even use that term. Um, and he, what made it such a good interaction was that he was so open, like so willing to listen and so open to everything I was saying. And I, I mean, I kind of was like, what do I have to lose? Like, I'm just going to lay it out for this guy. He's feeding wires and he probably wired up my whole house. It's recording everything since he's been there. Um, <laughs> but he's doing his thing. And I was like, uh, you know, it sounds to me like you're very invested in like what your son is or isn't doing right now. Right. Like, that's kind of an innocuous way to just be like, is, is your son having this issue or are you perceiving your son as having this issue? Because, and I get it, I get it. Like, I think that's the thing is that I'm able to, to sit with parents in that space of, oh, I get it. <laughs> I, I know that we all wanna see our kids succeed so we can sleep at night and have some rest, right? So we paint these pictures of our kids have to do X, Y, and Z. And so I kind of ripped the Band-Aid off a little bit for him. And I just was like, uh, I let him talk a lot. And then he was like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I just literally like vomited like my whole life in the last 45 minutes, you know. And I said, that's okay. I said, um, you know, my question for you is, it sounds like you're like a fixer. And he's like, I absolutely am. He's like, I'm a fixer. He's like, I'm an alpha. He's like, I have ADHD and I've, you know, medicated for that. So I've figured myself out and I, when something's happening, I try to figure out how to make it better or make it easier. And I said, you know, what would it be like if you just went home with the mindset of, I don't have to fix anything with my son. And it, for him, I mean, I saw it in his face. I mean, he literally stopped what he was doing and he was like, holy shit. 
Um, and he's like, I think that would probably change my entire relationship with him. And I was like, well, try that on for size, you know, <laughs> let's see, get back to me, you know, let's see how that goes. Um, so my own journey has really led me to this place of really being able to recognize when I'm kind of over parenting and overdoing it and doing things that are, I've inserted myself and my ego into experiences with my kids um, that ultimately, even if they're the best intentioned, it, it robs them of their ability to feel and learn and grow and rise. And I say this as much to myself every day because I still do it every day because we just, it's easy to fall into those habits. So that was the story with the Verizon guy. When you initially had responded that you don't, uh, you don't necessarily work with children on the spectrum or children at all, um, what was, like, what made you say that? Like, if you hadn't yet identified a particular audience that you served, well, you at least know that that's what you don't do. But I think up until that point, you, you definitely spoke about the experiences you had with other parents. I mean, obviously me being one of them, like you helped change a lot for me in so many, like, I mean, you talk about autism. I mean, you, you changed this father. So like, I, I know that's a fact. So when that happens, what makes you say, well, that's not necessarily what I do, but then jump right into the thing you do it was easy in that re respect because he was so open and he was clearly you know life coaching as an art form only works if your client is open to laying themselves vulnerable and raw and learning about themselves like i'm not sitting here telling him as a parent to do anything differently than what he's doing i am giving him ideas around what might he be able to try so that he can focus more on the connection and there you know i say everything that i say with with no judgment because i've been there and it makes sense to me that so many parents falter a little bit just because we're we're all kind of growing up in this society where society has painted a picture of how we're supposed to be as parents. You know, I see parents that overcompensate for whatever their childhood looked like or whatever they think they need to do, whether it's keeping up with the Joneses, right, or their neighbors, you know, all their kids play soccer and they want their kid to be involved in something, but their kid really doesn't love soccer. And the parents push it because they're feeding this narrative from what they're feeling, but they don't really realize it, right? So it's it's them being able to kind of lay themselves bare and recognize, like, where is your ego in this situation, right? And and it it there's no judgment there because it's just normal. Like it makes sense. And I have that too. I still have it now sometimes and I have to catch myself. He was definitely a big part of that conversation just because he was open and he started laying it out. And then he was willing to hear what I had to say. And I asked permission because even though he wasn't paying me, I was like, you know, do you do you want my feedback or did you just need to kind of have a moment, you know? And he was like, no, I'm happy to hear your feedback, you know? Um, so that's kind of how that works. I, I don't know if that fully like answers your question, but. Yeah, no, I, I think it's interesting because, you know, like going back to that day, now let's fast forward to like going to bed at night, you know, do you look at that day as a success in terms of, you know, a day in the life of you pursuing your career? Would you consider that successful? Yes. That conversation, like I was on a high because it was so organic and so spot on in terms of just what I, I bring to the, the coaching of parents my own experience and the theories and methods that I learned that were the only things that were able to talk me off the ledge. Because when I tell you that I was pretty much 
constructing where are all the bridges in the tri valley area the tri-state area where i was like i can jump off of all of these bridges you're gonna want to edit that we can't talk about that <laughs> um but i literally like just talking myself like off of the edge was hearing like a lot of these different people who talk about you know connection before correction and it it, it just to me it makes sense and i fully have absorbed like oh like there it is we're not raising these little people in the the shadow of ourselves like that's not how we're supposed to be doing it damn you society wow connection before correction mm -hmm.